I'm Jackie Chen. I'm a computational combustion scientist. I work at Sandia National Laboratories at the Combustion Research Facility. Um, and um, I kind of marry high performance computing together with high fidelity simulations of, um, of reacting flows. My interests are using these high performance uh, computers to understand um, the nuances of flow chemical kinetic interactions that occur inside of engines, engines for aviation, airplanes, for trains, trucks, and um, for power generation. And especially with today's problems with climate change, we're trying to um, look at alternative fuels such as hydrogen, ammonia, sustainable aviation biofuels um, as a replacement for conventional fuels, or at least to transition uh, away from these fossil fuels to provide energy um, you know, to our society. Computational uh, reacting flows has changed enormously from when I started um, maybe 30, 40 years ago, back in the mid 80s, the mainframe Cray computers were the thing of the, the largest supercomputers of the day, and they were housed at NASA Ames uh, when I was a PhD student at Stanford University. And back in that day, you, we could do um, high fidelity first principle simulations known as direct numerical simulations with just a single step chemistry global step chemistry, uh, or no chemistry at all, just a passive mixing problem um, with very, very low turbulence levels, low Reynolds numbers. Uh, that was on probably gigascale, gigaflop type supercomputers. And over time, um, computing, high performance computing has evolved to um, the killer micros, distributed computing, on up to nowadays to GPU dominated co computing for um, power management to reduce the amount of electricity required to run these supercomputers. And so we've gone many, many decades of scales from gigaflops now up to exascale, which is up to 10 to the 18 floating point operations per second. So huge computations on 50,000, 60,000 GPUs, state of the art GPUs. And so what that has done in my field is open up the possibilities from doing itsy bitsy uh, computations on the size of a postage stamp, you know, millimeters or centimeters squared, not even cubed, to now doing calculations that represent laboratory scale flames of actual devices, ac uh, aero combustors, internal combustion engines, and looking, using high performance computing in relevant parameter regimes to, as a microscope, as a numerical microscope to zoom in on the fluid, um, kinetic, and other multi-physics spray soot interactions. HPC um, and computing is a necessity uh, to keep up technologically in, in um, aviation and power industries, as well as in universities and academia. I think while it's possible with very advanced uh, laser diagnostics to, to make detailed measurements uh, inside of a combustion chamber, it's still very, very difficult because of the adverse environment that these measurements have to be made in. Very high pressures, high temperatures, and many of the measurements are line of sight or uh, integrated values, and maybe only a handful of species measurements can be made. Computation, on the other hand, um, with high performance computing allows you to resolve the um, spatial details and temporal fluctuations, including um, realistic representation of the chemistry of the fuel. And many of the uh, fuels are represented with um, hundreds of species and thousands of elementary reactions. Of course, that has to be reduced in order to be included in a computational fluid dynamics simulation. Uh, but the size of the calculations, the duration that you have to run them in a, to represent the physics in a practical device, and um, 
just the, the amount of data that's produced. Some of these high fidelity simulations produce upwards of a petabyte of data if, um, if, you, if you are allowed to store that kind of data. And so there's, uh, but it provides a level of detail and resolution of not only the species, temperature, and flow field, but all of it, uh, you can see everything, right? And so from that data, you can, um, you can coarse grain and uh, develop predictive models that can be used in engineering simulations to help design and optimize actual devices. I think um, high performance computing does play an enormous role for decarbonization because the decarbonization requires uh, alternative fuels like hydrogen, ammonia, sustainable aviation fuels. And those fuels have very different chemical and physical properties from conventional fuels, fossil fuels. For example, hydrogen is um, extremely mobile as a species. Uh, it diffuses everywhere. And, um, and I think it's mixing and reactive properties. It's also subjected to instabilities, thermodiffusive instabilities, that um, the current models that people use, industry uses in their CFD codes, computational fluid dynamics codes, are perhaps not very predictive when, you, um, when you're used, looking at these alternative fuels. And many of the industries want to have so-called drop-in fuels, so they don't want to modify the infrastructure and the, the engines themselves, but they would like to um, you know, minimize changes to the infrastructure and just be able to use directly an alternative fuel. So we have to ensure that the models um, capture correctly the physics. And many times it's multi-physics in um, airplanes, it's liquid fuel, so you have spray, atomization, uh, and soot on the other end, <laughs> you know, injection of liquid fuels and then worrying about emissions of soot particles that form, um, uh, can, uh, can be nucleation sites for contrail formation and, and um, cloud generation, which is another source of um, climate change. And so making sure that high performance computing, although only a few people will actually produce high fidelity first principles, direct numerical simulations, or even large eddy simulations um, on the world's leading supercomputers that provides unique data sets that can be mined for developing predictive models, either using physics-based uh, principles or using machine learning and artificial intelligence. You need, you need data to train these models on. A number of challenges to computing at really large scales, for example at exascale, 10 to the 18 floating point operations per second, or even the next generation at a scale, another three decades uh, faster. The direction I, I believe that we're headed in is not just being able to generate the forward simulation, in our case of a first principles simulation of a reacting flow, but also combining it with much more complex complicated workflows that include machine learning, AI, uh, and developing reduced order models on the fly while the simulation is proceeding. Artificial intelligence and machine learning can really augment um, simulations, uh, both in terms of developing reduced order models we're speeding up the calculation itself by, for example, uh, methods like principal component analysis, uh, transporting a f uh, far fewer uh, components than the total number of species. In combustion, as I mentioned, we have um, you know, large numbers of species to re represent a practical fuel. If you can just transport instead of a, th a hundred or a thousand species, but rather a handful of principal components that represents these low dimensional manifolds where um, these species live, that would be great. And so I think there's a real opportunity here to speed up the computation, open up the time steps that are possible, and to store far less data. Machine learning and artificial intelligence, given enough training data, 
um, will be a real uh, enabler for predictive models.